With late breaking news just into the newsroom, Robert Trump, the younger brother of President Donald Trump, has died at a New York hospital. The president announcing the death in a statement saying in part, quote, he was not just my brother, he was my best friend. He will be greatly missed, but we will meet again. His memory will live on in my heart forever. Robert, I love you. Rest in peace. President Trump made a last minute decision to go to New York yesterday to visit his brother as he headed to New Jersey for the weekend. Details of Robert Trump's illness have not been released yet. A source did tell CNN he had reportedly been sick for several months. Robert Trump had served as an executive vice president for the Trump Organization. Part of his duties including overseeing the organization's Atlantic City casinos. He's one of the president's four siblings, including the late Fred Trump. Robert Trump was 72. We will continue to bring you the latest details as they become available. Meanwhile, 170 new COVID-19 cases to report tonight here in Bear County. That brings our total overall to 43,993. In addition, 13 more deaths announced today. That brings our all-time death toll to 578. Some good news. Hospitalizations continue to go down. Right now, there are still, though, 598 patients in local hospitals. 285 of those are in the ICU and 194 are on ventilators. In other news, on this Saturday night, San Antonio police say they are searching for a suspect they believe may have been involved in a shooting in the 5500 block of Walsham Road earlier this evening. Two people were taken to the hospital with injuries. One of those victims, an 11 year old girl, and she's critically injured tonight. The night team Stephen Cavazos is live where that shooting took place. Stephen, what can you tell us? Tim, Courtney, that scene just wrapped up a few minutes ago, but Courtney, as you said, that 11 year old girl is in critical condition tonight. Now the second victim, a 35 year old woman is, was only had minor injuries. Now San Antonio police tell us that the information or the investigation that is, is still in the early stages and information can still change, but here's what we know so far. Now this all started just after six this evening. SCPD tells us the two shooting victims were traveling down Walsham in separate vehicles when a third driver, third vehicle, pulled out of a Long John Silver's parking lot and began to open fire. That driver left the scene before crashing further down on Walsham. Now it's not clear if the driver was the shooter, but SCPD does tell us that person is still at large. Now the suspect's vehicle is currently in police custody and the cause of the shooting again is still under investigation. But of course, we'll continue to keep you updated as more information becomes available. We're live on the Northeast side. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. Tim Courtney. Thank you, Stephen. He is being remembered as a hero. U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Guillermo Willy Perez was killed last month in a training mission. Perez was honored today with a procession into his hometown of New Braunfels, where hundreds showed up to pay their respects. The night team Stephen Cavazos was there earlier this evening and shows us now how he's being honored. You don't expect these things to happen, but they do happen. It was the homecoming this community never anticipated. U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Guillermo Willy Perez, a New Braunfels native, died serving his country. Saturday, hundreds showed up as the fallen hero returned home. He already fought the good fight, kept the faith, and he finished the course. Lance Corporal Perez died on July 30th during a training mission off the coast of California. The U.S. Marines casket was escorted by multiple law enforcement agencies into New Braunfels, a patriotic display along the route to Zoller Funeral Home. And flags continue to fly here across the city of New Braunfels to honor Lance Corporal Bettis. Many in this community calling him their hometown hero. Fred Adams is with the Texas Elk State Association. He says their mission is to remember fallen soldiers. Adams says he's proud to be part of a community where military matters. And that's why you saw the turnout with our folks here today. We're here to support those values. And he says Lance Corporal Pettis' dedication to his country will live on forever. And we're here to show that we are not going to forget. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. Also happening today, a private funeral for murdered Fort Hood soldier Vanessa Guillen. Her family and friends gathered for their final goodbye at a church in Houston. Her living and her death will not be in vain because she's already making a huge difference uh, for other women uh, serving in the military and quite frankly in organizations all over that you have to take sex sexual harassment very, very seriously. Gann's remains were found June 30th in a shallow grave near Fort Hood. 
Investigators believe a soldier killed her after she filed a sexual harassment charge against him. The suspect killed himself while fleeing police. His estranged wife, though, was charged with tampering with evidence for her alleged role in Guillen's death. Take a look now at other local top stories this evening. Five people were injured too critically after being ejected from a vehicle during a rollover crash this afternoon. It all happened on Loop 1604 near I-35. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, a tire on a pickup truck blew out, causing that crash. Two of the five people inside were hospitalized, and the other three suffered minor injuries. Deputies say they did have to shut down the northbound lanes of 1604 for a couple of hours to clear that scene, but the roadway has since reopened. A woman who was critically hurt in a crash on the southeast side last night has now died. The crash happened on Goliad Road in Southeast Military. The man responsible, 30-year-old Philip Lopez, has been charged with murder. Police say Lopez stole a vehicle and drove it down Goliad, hitting two other vehicles before colliding head-on with the victim's car. We are still waiting to learn her name. Police say a man is facing a manslaughter charge in connection with the shooting death of a 22-year-old man. Police say this man, 19-year-old Jaime Riojas, is the one who pulled the trigger just after midnight near Rosemont and Bethel Place Apartments on Acme Road. We're told several people were playing with a gun inside of a car when that victim was shot. Police say the victim proceeded to get out of the vehicle and ran towards a nearby apartment complex where he collapsed. He was later pronounced dead at the scene. Some of the suspects left the scene while others did cooperate with police. The victim has not been identified. Well, you know it was a hot day when it's 10 p.m. and it's still 94 degrees outside. Ew, 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 yeah, ew. ew is right. We had another record-breaking day as far as heat is concerned. We were able to see a high temperature of 104 in San Antonio. Good thing the aquifer is actually up a tenth of a foot. That's because during the weekend you see pumping a little bit less from the aquifer. Uh, and in the pond count, really nothing to complain about. Mold is low at 340 and pigweed is low at 30. Now coming up, we've got a lot to talk about in the forecast. Not only will we have to worry about record breaking heat tomorrow, but we also and this is good news, have the potential for some isolated showers and storms. A lot to unpack in the forecast. I'll be back in a bit. Courtney. Thank you, Sarah. See you soon. The survival of small businesses has been tagged as a major priority for city leaders as the COVID-19 pandemic continues. Today, hundreds of gallons of hand sanitizer and personal protective equipment were handed out by Mayor Ron Nuremberg and volunteers at the Alamo Dome. The night team's Alicia Barrera was at the distribution and spoke with business owners about how much these supplies will help them. Waking up early and sitting in line are the small sacrifices these local business owners had to pay compared to what they've endured since the pandemic slowed down or completely cut off their source of income. Stay safe. I just want to thank everybody here today for volunteering their time and, and helping businesses get right back on track. Joe Paradis owns an event venue. It's a reception hall. Uh, it's called Imperial Ballroom. Today's distribution will help make sure he has the supplies needed to protect himself, his staff and future customers. We've been closed since March of, uh, of this year, so it's been kind of tough and uh, we're hoping to open up uh, here real soon. More than 400 other business owners in San Antonio happily popped open their trucks and opened their back doors to receive much needed help. The whole kit includes two gallons of hand sanitizer and then the PPE kit bag includes two masks. It has a thermometer, a no contact thermometer and some helpful health and safety protocol. Flyers. Business owners tell me that thermometers are still hard to come by, and when they finally do, it's out of their budget, which is why they're very thankful to Mayor Ron Nirenberg and his team for making this contactless thermometer part of today's PBE kit. Good morning, such a thermometer, mask, and fascinating literature. Check it back seat. Help that, according to Mayor Ron Nirenberg, okay. is well deserved Have a good one. and essential. Yeah, small business is the lifeblood, it's the backbone of our local economy. And so, uh, you know, these business owners are taking a pledge to make sure that they operate in a safe manner and being able to do that is what will get this economy going again. We have two. So you need two more. According to the mayor's office, the Economic Development Department is already working towards another event. They're going to make sure to work with their two partner organizations to reach businesses that maybe, you know, can't come to us. Things are going to be a little bit different because of the pandemic and the virus out there, but we can show that we can do things safely. A link to the Economic Development Department's website can be found right now on ksat.com. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News.
The CDC reporting a rise in COVID-19 cases in children. See why some schools are continuing with their reopenings while others are now changing their plans. Plus, the popular social media app TikTok is fighting to stay alive. The latest move from President Donald Trump to stop the app that he describes as a threat to our national security. Plus, as the president continues his attack on mail-in voting, the U.S. Postal Service also sounding the alarm, saying ballots in 20 states may not be returned by the mail in time to be counted. The latest next. As both parties gear up for their national conventions, the Democrats this coming Monday, Republicans one week later, the battle over mail-in voting is definitely heating up. Yeah, it is. The U.S. Postal Service has a warning for the majority of states saying the state's deadlines for voters to request mail-in ballots may prevent those votes from being delivered in time to be counted. Here's ABC's Alex Prochet with the details. Protesters gathered Saturday morning outside the home of Postmaster General Luis DeJoy. <laughs> as the battle over mail-in voting continues. There is no safer way for people to vote than to vote by mail. And this administration is actively trying to dismantle that system so that people cannot vote. And that flies in the face of democracy. More and more states are looking to expand voting by mail amid the coronavirus pandemic. New Jersey is the latest state to announce all 6.2 million of its registered voters will receive a ballot in their mailbox. Today, we are announcing that the November 3rd general election will be held overwhelmingly through vo vote by mail. President Trump has been critical of mail-in voting, pushing baseless claims about voter fraud. Universal mail-in voting is going to be catastrophic. It's going to make our country a laughing stock all over the world. But his rival, Joe Biden, tweeting, voting by mail is safe and secure. Take it from a president who just requested his mail-in ballot for the Florida primary on Tuesday. The U.S. Postal Service warning at least 46 states, as well as Washington, D.C., that mail-in ballots might not be returned in time to be counted. In critical battleground states like Pennsylvania and Michigan, where the president won in 2016 by less than 1 percent, voters are able to request absentee ballots up until just a few days out from Election Day. But the post office says those deadlines are incompatible with their delivery standards, urging residents to request those ballots at least 15 days ahead of time. Only voters in four states, Nevada, Oregon, Rhode Island, and New Mexico should have sufficient time to receive and return their ballots by the state deadlines. The president has threatened to block the additional funding the post office says it needs to handle the surge in mail-in ballots, but then suggesting that funding may happen if Democrats agree to his coronavirus relief bill. But the Democrats aren't willing to provide other things, and therefore they're not going to get the funding for that. We want money to go to people. They want money in order to bail out states. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. You know, if it was the middle of August and it wasn't, you know, in the hundreds, I'd be worried. Yeah. But you know what? It is even it's record breaking. And, yes. and you know, I'm happy it's that it's unusual it, heat. Exactly. I'm happy that it is, though, because I was complaining a lot. <laughs> so you're justified. So I can justify it. Yes, yes. there you go. It's, you're both right, Tim. It is the hottest time of the year. So these kinds of temperatures are not necessarily surprising. But Courtney, you're right, Yay. because these temperatures have been breaking records. And in fact, we broke a record today. 104 degrees for the high in San Antonio. Our average high this time of year is the hottest it gets 97 that's the hottest average high temperature we see in the year but we were seven degrees above that today it was 108 in del rio 105 in uvalde 106 in carrizo springs 107 in new Braunfels, and 105 in austin so the heat was on even right now outside it's still 95 degrees in san antonio one exception it's in the 70s out near rock springs right now and you can see that there was some rain for areas like junction Edwards County, even northern Valverde County, and we're going to see a chance for rain in our forecast here in San Antonio over the next couple of days, especially on Monday. But I do want to talk about our weather pattern right now and the reason why we are oppressively hot. A, a really strong heat high is currently over the Four Corners region, and that uh, pressure from that heat high is what's allowing for us to be warm here in San Antonio. And you can see that it's still hot around that heat high, 108 in Phoenix and 105 in Las Vegas. So we're still going to have the heat tomorrow. But notice, like I showed you near Rock Springs and across parts of the Panhandle, there are weaknesses in this upper level flow that allow for a few showers and storms to develop. 
and we're going to see that in our forecast the next couple of days. I want to take you through the future cast for tomorrow and what you'll notice is that it'll be sunny for most of the day. However, in the late evening, right around sunset for areas across uh, the hill country and out toward Austin, a few showers and storms. Some of those may make it to San Antonio in the late evening hours. Tomorrow night we have a 20% chance for isolated showers and storms in San Antonio. Even if we don't get rain, we will get rain cool there. So probably by midnight tomorrow, we'll likely be in the 70s, which is nice. Then on Monday, our better chance for rain. Once again, for most of the day, it'll just be sunny and hot. However, the positioning of the upper level high and a little wiggle in the upper levels of the atmosphere should allow for us to see a little bit more coverage on Monday. Now, it's not a lot only about 30 to 40%, but the chance for rain is still there. And I have to admit, with these upper level weather patterns, sometimes it's a little tricky to forecast. So that's why we've got a 30 to 40% chance on Monday. Not everybody will see rain, so just keep your fingers crossed. Isolated tomorrow night, uh, not really gonna rain on Monday morning, a little bit more coverage on Monday in the afternoon. That's why you got 30%. And then isolated showers and storms will be possible again on Tuesday. But for the majority of the day tomorrow, it is just gonna be hot, hot, hot. Waking up at 79, heat advisory tomorrow, so please make sure to stay cool. 104 for the high temperature, that would break a record again. We've broken a record the past two days. Today was the ninth day in a row we've been at above 100, and tomorrow could be the 10th day, will likely be the 10th day in a row we've been at and above 100. Then that small chance for isolated rain in the evening hours. Not only is it going to be hot here in San Antonio, but hot everywhere tomorrow. 106 in Del Rio, 106 for the high in New Braunfels, 104 in Leon Springs, 104 JBSA Randolph, 105 in Seguin. Thankfully, with that heat high moving a little bit more off to the west and chances for isolated showers and storms. Look at those high temperatures. I never thought I'd be happy to see 99 on the seven day forecast, but there you go. A little bit better than than that hot, hot weather today. <clears throat> Oof, still tomorrow though. Party at Tim's pool. <laughs> Sounds good. Yes. I'll be here. You can go uh, swim with somebody else. <laughs> okay, fine. Party without us at Tim's pool. Hey, if it's going to be hot, we might as well break some records in the process. <laughs> right. All right, so the Big Ten and Pac-12 said no dice on a football season so far this year, if that'll stick. But meanwhile, everybody else is moving forward, including the, mm -hmm. the Longhorns. Yes, fingers crossed. Texas Longhorns college football <laughs> will kick off in less than one month. Speaking of the Longhorns, their football team held scrimmage today, their first scrimmage in a very long time. Plus, it's all about equal reps for the UTSA quarterbacks coming up. Austin, the Texas Longhorns held their first live football scrimmage since the middle of December. Overall, it was practice number eight. Head coach Tom Herman said the effort was great, but the play was sloppy at times. He said there were too many false start penalties and pre-snap penalties from the offense. Now, both the offense and defense had some bright spots. The number one and number two offenses managed to score touchdowns, while the number two defense picked off a pass. The ones and twos each saw around 40 snaps, while the threes got 12 to 15. All in all, not a bad day on the 40 acres. The offense had some success, scored a couple touchdowns on, on with the ones and the twos. The defense had a few three and outs and uh, an interception with the twos. And so um, I, I think it was very balanced. The, the defense wound up winning it, I, I think, uh, more so because the, the few pre-snap penalties kind of doomed the, the offense from a not just a losing a point standard or uh, losing a point area but but also getting behind the chains and, and not being able to to make first downs on some of those drives herman also praised how quickly as freshmen are buying into the team's culture as of now texas will host utep saturday september 12th to open the season their only non-conference game Earlier this week, Texas A&M football revealed new uniforms for the 2020 season. The Aggies will pay homage to the traditional and iconic maroon and white uniforms of the late 1980s and 90s with a modern twist. The white shoulder stripes have been replaced by simple numbers on the sides of the sleeves. A bolder and bigger Texas A&M is stitched across the front. Head coach Jimbo Fisher said he's always been a fan of the more traditional look in uniforms. 
UTSA football did some tackling this morning during the team's first scrimmage of fall camp. After no spring ball, you know the Roadrunners were eager to put on the pads and play some real football. Graduate transfer Josh Atkins is one of four guys fighting for QB1. Atkins was a star of Smithson Valley before playing college ball at New Mexico State, where he started 20 games for the Aggies. The UTSA head football coach Jeff Trailer is trying to make the QB competition as equal as possible. We've all been given equal reps, equal opportunity to show what we have, um, showcase our talents and our abilities. Um, and, and as far as that goes, I think that the coaches have been uh, great, just giving us all equal opportunity, especially without having any type of spring ball for those guys and me coming in late. Um, it's, it's been uh, very friendly in that way, and uh, we appreciate that greatly. UTSA is off tomorrow and will resume camp on Monday. After weeks of uncertainty due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the University of the Incarnate Word postponed all fall sports Thursday after the Southland Conference made the same move first. Football is off for now. Head coach Eric Morris likes the fact they at least have a direction, but feels for his football players and so many others. You know, my heart breaks for those kids to not be able to have a normal season. My heart breaks for my five-year-old who, you know, has to go to preschool and, and wear a mask all day and, and have barriers around him at the lunch table and no recess. I mean, it's, it's not normal for kids. It, it makes me worry about their mental health for the future. Um, it's just, it's not how we've been raised and, and what we know is as America. So um, I think we'll all just have to find a way to get through this thing together. The Southland Conference presidents approve postponing all fall conference sports with the intent to explore a conference game schedule in the spring semester. And coming up later in sports, high school volleyball players adapting to new rules due to COVID-19. But I'll tell you this, they are so happy to be playing the game they love so much. We were discussing the uniform changes for the Aggies. Yeah. Sarah came over and set us straight. I said, it's kind of like when the Browns change their uniforms. You can't really tell. <laughs> I saw Sarah getting all excited over there. They that. look the same. <laughs> they do look the same. Here's the deal. In Texas A&M, we stick with our tradition. Right. So a little bit of a change is a big deal. She there couldn't tell either. <laughs> Setting us straight. All right, we'll be right back. Parents and school administrators facing tough decisions over whether to send children back to school and whether college students should be on campus. Yeah, although the number of cases is tapering off nationwide, the number of deaths does remain high. Here's ABC's Christine Sloan with the details. The U.S. death toll from the coronavirus has now surpassed 169,000. You can't run away from the numbers of people who've died, the number of people who are getting hospitalized, the surges we're seeing. But President Trump says parts of the country are seeing a decline in cases. This week, cases nationwide have declined by 6 percent. The test positivity rate has fallen to just 6.5 percent, a 71 percent reduction from April and a 15 percent reduction from mid-July. The Centers for Disease Control saying more than 200,000 American lives could be lost by Labor Day. That somber prediction coming as many students begin heading back to school. The CDC saying cases are on the rise in children, and as many as 45 percent of those cases may be asymptomatic. At this Oklahoma high school, 17 students were potentially exposed after one student tested positive, but misunderstood quarantine rules and went to school anyway. A school district outside Phoenix has canceled the first day of school this coming Monday after more than 100 teachers and staff refused to show up. New York's Columbia University, the latest to join a growing list of universities announcing all fall classes will be online. Outside Philadelphia campus, police had to break up a large party at Villanova. I saw it in person, so thought it was kind of crazy. The school's president now telling every student, if you don't follow campus health guidelines, you will be sent home. The University of Notre Dame, with already at least 29 students testing positive for the virus, many of the cases tied to the same gathering. The University of Arizona testing students before they move into their dorms. Dominic Scott given the all clear after testing negative. It is a little bit of suspense, like way to go, they said like two hours, so. Students who test positive are sent to an isolation dorm for 10 days. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. And amid this pandemic, two senior officials are departing the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. An official at the agency confirmed to CNN Chief of Staff Kyle McGowan has resigned effective Friday. Deputy Chief of Staff Amanda Campbell also did the same. The two are leaving voluntarily to start a consulting firm. McGowan and Campbell are both Trump appointees, but 
Members of the administration have criticized them for not being loyal enough. Around the world now, Mexico's president has announced 30 days of national mourning to honor the country's COVID-19 victims. According to a statement, Mexico's government expressed its most sincere condolences to the families and victims and to those affected by the pandemic. And they recognize the efforts made by all health care workers to prevent the spread of coronavirus. Flags will be flown at half staff from August 13th until September 11th. There will also be a daily moment of silence at noon every day during that time period. Meanwhile, in France, police were seen enforcing mandatory mask rules in Paris today. The French capital has been declared a zone of active circulation of the coronavirus. Data shows uh, a sharp rise in COVID-19 infections with Paris and Marseille being declared high risk zones. Now to your consumer news. President Donald Trump has ordered social media app TikTok to sell its U.S. assets within 90 days. This is the latest in a rift between the president and TikTok after he declared last month that he'll ban the app. He issued an executive order calling on TikTok's parent company, the Chinese-owned ByteDance, to divest. The, in the order, President Trump says that TikTok is a threat to national security. It's scrambled to keep its American presence alive and has previously threatened to take legal action. Meanwhile, Microsoft has emerged as a potential buyer for the platform. Meanwhile, the United States uh, Postal Service is planning for a temporary price hike. It is set to go into effect from October 18th to December 27th of this year. USPS says the price increase is due to the high demand for online items. Package shipments will see a rate increase anywhere from 24 cents to as much as $1.50. The price hike is expected to still keep the Postal Service rates competitive while providing the agency with some much needed revenue. Those in constant need of insulin could soon be paying less, but it could take some time before that happens. After the break, some advice on what you can do to cut costs in the meantime. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Prices of insulin have skyrocketed and patients are desperately trying to find ways to pay less. New executive orders recently signed by President Trump could help some people get insulin for less money, but it could also take time before that goes into effect. In the meantime, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz looks at what diabetics can do right now to lower the costs. And Dina has been managing her type 1 diabetes since she was 10. But once she was off her parents' insurance, she couldn't afford her insulin. My insulin usually runs anywhere from two to 400 a month. I have had to ration my insulin before because of the expenses of it. It's a familiar struggle. Since 2014, the prices of some commonly prescribed insulins have soared, but there are ways to find more affordable insulin. If you're insured and you have a high deductible plan, new federal rules might mean that you have to just pay a low copay and not the full amount. For example, if you're insured by Cigna, you could get insulin for as little as $25. So check with your insurer. If your insurance company has not yet set low or zero copays, or if you don't have insurance, there are authorized generics to consider. Some companies have an authorized generic that's cheaper. Eli Lilly's authorized generic version of Humalog, called Insulin Lispro, is half the price at just $150 per month. If you have to stick with a name brand insulin, there are some lower cost options now available. Ask your doctor or pharmacist. You could also consider human insulin. Novo Nordisk's human insulin is available at certain pharmacies for about $25, depending on your insurance plan. If you don't have insurance, the insulin manufacturer may have a patient assistance program that provides it for free if you qualify. There are also community clinics and organizations that can help out with cost. To find one of those, check out the website needymeds.org. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, 94 degrees outside. That's 10 degrees cooler than our afternoon high, but that means our afternoon high was 104. Very hot day across San Antonio and the KSAT 12 viewing area. And guess what? Tomorrow it's going to be the same. Tomorrow is Sunday. A lot of people like to go barbecuing. And so for your barbecuing forecast, just know that the heat is going to be on 95 and sunny at noon, 104 in the afternoon. There will be a heat advisory in place. Southeast winds at five to 10 miles per hour. But notice there a small chance, 20% for an isolated shower storm in the evening hours. I'll be back with a look ahead of what you can expect and talk a little bit more about our rain chances coming up in a bit.
oh, it's time to talk about how hot it is again. <laughs> That's, is that all we do? Yeah, in the summer months it is. In the summer months it's typical for us in San Antonio, but guys, the good news is we are going to shake things up a little bit, have a small chance for rain at least in the next few days, and our temperatures are going to go down a bit, but we got another day tomorrow where we're going to be challenging records and likely breaking record high temperatures. Notice there on the time lapse that the clouds started to increase before sunset. Reason for that, there were some showers and storms in the hill country. I'll show you that in just a bit, but for now it's 94 degrees outside. Humidity, not too bad out there. It actually feels okay outside, even though it's in the 90s still. That's because the sun has gone down and humidity is pretty low. But out in the hill country and out toward Rock Springs, you can see that there is still some lingering light showers near Sonora and in the northern part of Valverde County as well. And some places out there radar indicated rainfall of up to an inch of rain, but it's quiet here in San Antonio and it'll be quiet for the vast majority of the day tomorrow. Highs today 104 in San Antonio it was 107 in New Braunfels, 108 in Del Rio, 105 in Yavaldi. This is hot. Yes, it's August hot, but it's seven degrees above the average high temperature. Today made our 24th day this year at 100 degrees or above. That is double the average of 12. I want to show you an interesting statistic. These are the years that we've had the most 100 degree days on record. Notice how they're all within the last about 11 years or so. Back in 2009, we hit 59 days. Uh, time's running out to get to those records, but still a very hot day regardless. Weather pattern, heat high. We're still under the influence of that heat high. Very hot, 108 in Phoenix and Las Vegas right now near that heat high. But like I mentioned earlier, there are some weaknesses. We're on the, uh, the east side of this heat high. Notice how the upper level atmosphere is in the northwest flow. Whenever we get northwest flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere, atmosphere is a bit unpredictable. But that's good news for us because we want rain. And over the next few days, we're going to have isolated chances for showers and storms here or there. Taking you through the future cast for tomorrow. In the hill country tomorrow, in the afternoon, there will be some showers and storms. This will send rain cooled air our way so that in the evening hours it should feel pretty great. And if we're lucky, one or two of these storms will make it to San Antonio. That's why I'm going for a 20% chance for isolated showers and storms pretty much after 7 o'clock in the afternoon. So keep your fingers crossed for that. In general, though, it's going to be a hot day. We'll wake up in the mid to upper 70s tomorrow, and then afternoon highs will be well into the triple digits. 104 for the high temperature in San Antonio, 106 in New Braunfels and in Del Rio. It's going to be a hot day with a heat advisory in place, so please avoid working outside or doing stress-related activity outside during the peak heating hours of the day because it'll be hard for us to cool down, even for us. Texans and San Antonians. 106 for the high New Braunfels, 104 JBSA Randolph, and 105 near Medina Lake. Now, I'm going to show you the future cast for Monday. Monday, we have a little bit better of a chance for rainfall, all because of what looks like it's going to be storm system up near the Dallas Fort Worth area. That's going to continue to send around bursts of energy our way and even shift our wind around to the north, which isn't that common in the summertime and notice the coverage is a little bit greater on Monday night. At least that's what this forecasting model is showing. And so I do think that we're going to have our best chance for rain in a while on Monday, but even then it's still only a 30% chance. We've got some time to refine this forecast. Please continue to check back in with us. Check on your case at weather authority app. We'll send notifications right to your phone. When we have a better idea of for sure whether or not we're getting some good rain in the Alamo city. Look at that. Highs in the upper 90s. Not as bad as the triple digits, right? Well, even a small percentage makes me happy. I've seen some really brown lawns recently. Yeah, Ooh, crunchy using, lawns. Crunchy using lawns. Using way too much water on mine. Yeah. All right. Uh, what will the Spurs look like next season, Larry? That is a very good question. I know a lot of fans want to see them keep the up-tempo yep. pace that they used inside the Orlando bubble that was so successful. Speaking of that, DeMar DeRozan, he played well inside the bubble as he had to adapt to this new style of play. And despite COVID restrictions, the local high school volleyball players are thrilled to be playing. Coming up. During the Spurs run in Orlando, the future was front and center with the younger guys getting a lot of playing time. But leading the way was 11-year veteran DeMar DeRozan, who played power forward in the Spurs' small ball lineup. And he led them in bubble scoring at 21.7 points per game. Lonnie Walker IV was impressed by how well DeMar adapted.
One thing for certain is that's what I learned from Demar is you know, being a being a, a great scorer or getting by your man. You know, teams sometimes close down, close into the paint. So looking for others um, to score and being ready to shoot, um, it sure it sure as heck opens the floor for yourself and for your teammates. Portland locked up the eighth spot in the West by beating Memphis in the NBA's first ever playing game today. Third quarter, Blazers down three when Damian Lillard drives and jams it over Jonas Valanciunas. Jonas Valanciunas, I mean, wow, that's 6'2", dunking over a 6'11", center. Dame with a team-high 31. Fourth frame, Grizzlies' job rant splits the defense for a two-handed dunk. He scored a game-high 35. Portland's C.J. McCollum scored 14 of his 29 in the fourth, and Portland wins at 126-122, to and they will face the Lakers in round one. Astros looking for their third straight win tonight in Houston, hosting the Mariners. Home team up 1-0, bottom of the four of the Yuli. Gurriel sends one deep to center. That hits off the top of the fence and bounces over. A solo shot gives the Astros a 2-0 lead. That's all the offense they needed tonight. And the Astros top the Mariners 2-1. And the Rangers beat the Rockies 6-4. Undefeated San Antonio FC at home this evening playing Austin Bold FC at Toyota Field. No fans allowed. Home team down 1-0. Stoppage time off the corner kick. The ball ricochets back to Jose Gallegos outside the box and his strike finds the back of the net. The Central Catholic product's second career goal for SAFC is the equalizer. And San Antonio remains undefeated on the season with a 1-1 draw. Class 4A through 1A high school volleyball team started their seasons this week and the the game feels very different. During Friday night's game between Lytle and Bandera, teams did not shake hands before or after the game. They didn't switch sides between sets and all of their chairs were spaced out. Some girls even wore masks during the game. While a lot can change over the next couple of weeks depending on the rise or fall of coronavirus cases, these girls are just happy to be on the court together again after a tough summer. It's so hard to just like get up in the morning and go work out because like if you didn't work out then you know you were going to get behind and everyone else is working out so like there's just the motivation to get up in the mornings and go run or just go touch volleyball was so hard and just being back here with everyone like working out is so much easier now just being with your friends and like it's so much more fun. At first I was kind of scared because I didn't know we were going to have a season. But I'm like, all these girls that came, even during the summer workouts, was amazing because mostly the past couple years, no one really shows up. But these girls are actually showing up, actually wanted putting the work, so I'm kind of proud of it. Non-conference action continues next week, while classes 5A and 6A begin on September 14th. Good to see those ladies out there on the court. Hope everything works out for football and everybody else. Too. You got it, man. <laughs> All right, we'll be optimistic. Yep. Thanks, Larry. You go. After the break, a little girl suffering from cancer goes on the shopping spree of a lifetime. Stay with us. Let's wrap up this show by telling you something good. A 10 year old Alaskan girl battling ovarian cancer got her dream day courtesy of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. There she is. Lauren Guise was surprised with a shopping spree she will never forget. She was given more than $1,000 to spend at Target. The girl and her family had the entire store to themselves. Look at her go. Tuesday shopping spree allowed her to temporarily forget about her medical concerns and just enjoy buying some of her favorite things. Good for her. Yeah, Great I love to, to see, see that. Her getting something there. Mm -hmm. That is really awesome. Unfortunately, tomorrow we are just going to see another hot day. 104 degrees for the high, likely breaking that record of 103. There is a small chance for rain late tomorrow and then again on Monday. But hey, those temperatures start to get below 100, and that looks okay to me, especially in August. A brief break. That's all of our time for tonight. Thanks for watching. Be sure to catch GMSA tomorrow starting at 6.